to the legislature after Memphis Commission voted to reinstate him Wednesday, nearly a week after his banishment for supporting gun control protesters propelled him into the national spotlight. Hundreds of supporters marched Justin Pearson through Memphis to the Shelby County Board of Commissioners hearing, meeting, I'm sorry, chanting and cheering before entering the commission chambers where officials quickly voted seven to no to nil to uh, restore him to his position. Uh, the House's vote last Thursday to remove Justin Pearson and Representative Justin Jones, who you heard in the intro, but keep white Representative Gloria Johnson drew accusations of racism. Johnson did, however, survive by just one vote. The Republican leadership denied that race was a factor. Uh, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and four other senators sent a letter Wednesday asking the Department of Justice to investigate whether the expulsions violated the Constitution or federal civil rights laws to take steps, take all steps necessary to uphold the democratic in integrity of our nation's legislative bodies. After the reinstatement vote, a throng of jubilant supporters greeted Piercing outside in a church-like celebration. Pearson adopted the cadence of a preacher as he delivered a rousing speech with a call and response crowd interaction. Accompanied by his fiance, mother, and four brothers, Pearson pumped his fist, jumped up and down, and hugged relatives. He is expected to return to the Capitol when the House holds its next floor session and plans to be sworn in there at the beginning they the republicans expelled pearson and jones over their role in a gun control protest on the house floor after a nashville school shooting that left three children and three adults dead um the nashville metropolitan council only took a few minutes on monday to unanimously restore jones in the office he was quickly reinstated yeah. to his house seat rev i know you've been watching this what do you think about this well, it was, you know, that political theater. Oh, that was my word. That was the word I was going to use. <laughs> political theater. Because <laughs> two things. One, okay, so there are 12 blacks in the Tennessee House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Now, most of those representatives are older. Mm -hmm. They're from the boomer generation. Right. These two, the two Justins, are young guys. And the old heads and the young heads have different ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. None of the old heads picked up a megaphone. None of the, oh, now, if you were to just look at that as that, you might be led to think, well, I guess the old black people don't care about, you know, kids getting killed mm -hmm. in Memphis. I kind of doubt that's the yeah, case. Yeah, I, I, I doubt that as well. But that's just not something that old people are going to do. Right. But that's something young people do all the time. You know, that that's to them, that's... How you do things, you right. you create a ruckus, you you get attention and so forth. Now, they they expose, you know, they kicked out the two guys. They they kept the white lady by one vote. Now people are talking about race, race, race. I, my first thought was uh, gender. Mm. See, because uh, in most places, women there are more women than men in most mm -hmm. places, and. Uh, you can probably, you know, step on two men and get away with it. Right. You probably don't want to do anything to a woman. And let me just say this. <laughs> white womanhood, too, is different than black womanhood. Oh, definitely. Okay. It's just like with, with those uh, two female athletes a few uh, a few weeks ago <laughs> where, like, the white girl, she was taunting her opponents and oh, stuff. Yeah. And she was doing this. And then as soon as the black girl did it to the white girl, all these white dudes come out of the woodwork like, you cannot do that. You're classless. Like, uh, you know, doctor, I always go back to the funky academic, uh, Irmio St. Oh, Perfong. Yeah. I love the funky academic. He <laughs> talks about specifically white womanhood is its own uh, category. <laughs> like these do like the non minority minority. Yeah, the, the, right, right. <laughs> They're the biggest voting block in America. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't know that we, we, we like. It, they, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I always complain about liberals and in, 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 in that side because. It's a, there's a, a hugely dishonest element to the modern feminist movement when they're pretending that they're not the majority of people voting, that they're not the people picking presidents. <laughs> like they make it seem like men are all picking. 
white women are the reason Donald Trump won in 2016. White yeah. women voted for him. 60% of I mean, I'm sorry, 53% of them. And then in 2020, even more white women voted for Donald Trump. They voted against another white woman in Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. So so white womanhood is a, 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 is a totally different thing. And, and that's one of the things I did like with the funky academic talked about it, or Ermio Safer and Pong. He's on YouTube. Check out his videos. This issue of gun rights has become the sort of liberal white woman's issue. And mm -hmm. they are using these young black dudes like this is our issue. I, this is not our issue. Mm. Because I, we, we, have a, we have a gang problem. We have drug problems and gang problems. The same problems that you have in a, in a disadvantaged communities all over the world. Not just here in America, but mm -hmm. all over the world. You have gang and drug problems. Gun laws are not going to solve the problems in Memphis, Tennessee. Like, they're just not. Because drug cartels and gangs, just like they, like strong laws don't stop the gang violence in Chicago. Yeah. Or in Mexico. Mexico has very strict gun laws. Doesn't stop El Chapo and the Zetas <laughs> from getting guns. In fact, they get the best guns. Yes, because they're cartels. <laughs> they don't care about the law. Rich cartels can afford to strap up everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's our problem. We have a gang and drug problem. You fix those problems by elevating people's lifestyles and elevating people's standard of living. But one thing I, I saw, <laughs> uh, I, this came actually came from uh, Tariq. Now she let me give credit where credit is due. He actually found old video of uh, Justin Pearson uh, when he first started running for office. And how he's changed, how he's changed the way he, now, now uh, you're not going to be able to see this and the, and the audience isn't going to be able to see this. Mm -hmm. But when Pearson first started, he was very, he had a close cropped haircut, very short hair. And you can listen to how he spoke. He spoke very proper, very, uh, you know, uh, what people would say white, but I, I would say just, you know, uh, very articulate and very neutral. So he actually juxtaposed uh, Justin Pearson's uh, old speeches with uh, his, his old campaign uh, stuff with his new stuff. And you, and you can just listen to this. Listen to this really quick. All right. Um, Justin J. Pearson. Justin J. And I'm running for president of BSG. There are a few reasons that we're running this campaign this year. One has to do with representation. How can we represent all voices in a conversation? I wanted to do this by partnering with organizations from the Boone Democrats to the Boone Republicans. I want to bring together different voices, dissenting voices, voices that may be more liberal or more conservative, in order that we can reach a point of sort of the radical middle. Seem like the NRA and gun lobbyists might win. But oh, that was good news for us. I don't know how long this Saturday in the state of Tennessee might last. But oh, we have good news, folks. We've got good news that Sunday, Sunday is always coming. comes. So now he's doing his MLK he, he impression. He stole the Sunday is a coming line. So he's like he's doing his sort of MLK black preacher uh, impression. Like that's not how he got in the door, but that's sort of the the character that he's molded in. And so this this started looking like a, a Black Lives Matter type hustle at this point. <laughs> Come on, give me more. Give me. You, you know. Now, Memphis is, of course, it's the home of the Church of God in Christ, you know, so that plays well in mm -hmm. Memphis. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know, but you're right. that That's not him. Although I heard, uh, what was that, on uh, the West Coast Breakfast Club, uh, who's that lady that uh, she's uh, she's big on YouTube, I mean, on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, her name begins with a T. And I'm trying to find, because I actually follow her, and I don't know why I can't find her, because I see stuff from her all the time on Twitter. Mm. Uh, but she's, she's a very intelligent black woman. Good interviewer, too. Oh, are, are you talking about my girl, Teslin Fig yes. Figaro? Yes. Miss Figaro. Figaro. Oh, yes, I love her. And uh, she pointed some of this stuff out. Yeah. I look at it like this. The guy has, again, there's 12 other people who didn't get kicked out. So I'm not going to say that the fact that he was a black man didn't make it easier for that one vote 
that that uh, couldn't bring itself to kick, you know, Johnson out, mm-hmm. but was able to kick him and, uh, you know, to kick the two of them out. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that it didn't have anything to do with it. But out of 12 guys, only two of them picked up a megaphone mm-hmm. during the, 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 while they're doing their, their representative business, you know, discussing legislation, whatever else they were supposed to be doing, they were doing this. Now, if you're elected to a, an elective office, unless you're elected to a Gary Precinct committee person job, it's a job. You get paid to actually show up and, you know, study legislation, to present legislation, to vote on legislation. You're not really elected and paid to be a community activist. Hmm. You're just not. And you're in the minority. There's there's 12 of you. I don't know how many people are in the, in the entire Tennessee uh, state legislature, but I'm pretty sure that the blacks are not in the majority. There's only 13% or so black population in Tennessee. So you're going into the situation where you're not the majority, where they tell you, don't do this. Don't do what you're thinking. Don't do that. You want to you wanna, uh, get involved about, you know, gun lobbying and so on and so forth? You know, draft a bill. That's how we roll. You draft a bill. Mm. Not you grab a megaphone. That works for, for Brother Coleman down in Indianapolis because he hasn't been elected to office. So he can he can talk through the megaphone. Mm. Those other people that came into the uh, House chambers, again, they're not elected. They're regular people. They can shout all they want to because they're not paid to be there. Mm. But those two guys, they're on the payroll. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and here's what sort of cemented the way I feel about I saw this this week, too. Now, you know, Rev, when, you know, we talk about this all the time. I talk about this all the time about liberals using us yep. as black people to push their sort of culture issues. Now, this is, once again, uh, Justin Pearson. I want you to le- think, I want you to listen very closely to what he is advocating for. Very closely, in, while at the same time talking about supposedly issues that will affect us. Of injustice. We won't have to worry about folks talking about freedom of speech and the right to protest for what is right in our heartbeats as right. Convince themselves they won't have to worry about folks talking about advocating for people to get access to health care who are transgender children. <laughs> won't have to worry about the need to end lynching as capital punishment. Won't have to worry about these folks out here who talk about ending gun violence, stopping the proliferation of weapons of war on our streets and communities, expanding access to abortion and contraception, ending bad laws like the third grade retention law that penalizes students, not helps them. They thought they wouldn't have to worry. So here we go again. So here we go again. He somehow, he sandwiched in there between like lynching he somehow he he sandwiched in there, transgender access, <laughs> healthcare access, for uh, children. Yeah, he now he said it <laughs> for children. I guess he he didn't get the memo. You know, it's not supposed to. It's not children. That's this is pertaining to children. Don't get this stuff. So he didn't get the memo. Right. So this is once again. This is one one of the reasons why I always say as black people we have to divorce these people. As the left, especially, I'm somebody on the left, we have to divorce these people because the average person all over is starting, there's already been a groundswell against a lot of this stuff. Uh, we saw a, a, the outrage of where one of the swimmers who was beat by Leah Thomas, who was the transgender who won the swimming competitions yeah. the college, uh, one of the girls he beat, or I'm sorry, she or it, whatever beat, um, was speaking at a college campus and transgender activists tracked this girl down and held her hostage. They, mm-hmm. l- they literally held her hostage at the university, would not let her go. They were physically threatening her safety because this, this woman, this young woman, 22, 23 years old said, look, I worked hard to be the best swimmer uh, that I could be. And this guy just decided he wanted to be a woman. And now he's ahead of me. You know, this guy's 6'4", and he still has his male parts. 
<laughs> and he's still bigger, way bigger than all of us, like girls, and he's just kicking our behinds. That's not fair. And the transgender activists tracked this young woman down at the college campus, and they forced her in. She had to hide in a classroom uh, for the so the police and have the police called. She's suing the university right now because her physical safety was threatened. She ended up missing her flight. Um, she said that she ended up missing her flight. Uh, in places like New Zealand, Australia, you're seeing backlash. And, and it's unfortunate because in this country, because our media is so corporately owned, and like I always talk about, you know, liberals control the media, so you're not going to see it as much in this. Though there has been some pushback by from the uh, Bud Light. <laughs> Bud Light put the transgender on the front of the Bud Light bottle. And now that you see, they lost five billion dollars in, in yeah. like I think a few days. <laughs> wow! They lost five billion dollars in a few days after people are starting to push this back. But they use but they use people like this Joker. They use people like this Joker to pretend like this is a black issue <laughs> for black people. Now notice, ain't nothing come out of his mouth about reparations, yeah. about an end to the prison industrial complex, any of these things, or about anything yeah. that will fix the black community or make you know. Whatever, you in Memphis, Memphis, one of the poorest cities in America. I think the lack of access for transgender children to uh, hormones and and, uh, and uh, castration is probably the least of, of most of the people in Memphis's, uh, uh, their, what things they're worried about. But once again, they use us. To, and this is what Malcolm X talked about 60 years ago. I always have to talk about it. When he talked about the difference between white liberals and white conservatives, you know, white conservatives are the wolf. You know the wolf is scary, so you stay away from the wolf. But the fox, <laughs> the fox lures you in. And he said they lure you in with, with all these promises and all these other stuff. But really, they are just using black people in a football game that they got against conservatives. And you see it right here. Now, when, when the backlash against all this stuff happens, they're going to associate that crap with him. They're going to associate all that crap with blackness and they're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater because instead of being smart and hope having our issues separate from them, we have let them just wrap it all up. If you want to be, if you're going to be against lynching and against police brutality, you got to be for uh, castrating eight year olds and putting them on uh, hormones. <laughs> like th this is the, uh, what it is. Uh, you know, I, I you know, a, a lot of people uh, have an issue about the gun thing. Like I said, look, we talk about every time there's a, a mass shooting here, uh, standards of living are the problem in our community. Um, and, and so this isn't really our issue, but like I said, they're going to they're gonna use these brothers, I guess, pimp them out to push this issue. Ugh, this is frustrating, uh, especially seeing a lot of black people going along with this, which is always uh, a disappointing well, you know, I mean, they woke up. They were told that there was racial injustice taking place. We're we're so accustomed to, you know, dealing with racial injustice that anytime somebody says racial injustice is taking place, yep, we respond. Right. That is. And true. those there's two guys, with big one. Well, one of them had a big bushy afro. I guess the other one has braids, dreads. So, uh, he has a. He has a. He he goes between the dread. Uh, he goes between the, the afro, the, the sort of natural style, and and the the slick back between okay. those two things. And so, and we saw the fist raised up, and we went, we you know, we went back to 1968 and the Olympics, and you know, it was just like we had a flashback moment there. And then he started doing the preacher man thing, mm -hmm. and you know, hey. <laughs> Familiar, you know, we heard the song before. We knew the steps to the song, and so we started to dance. Yep, and so we can't we can't resist the preacher man voice. Just ref. can't resist the preacher man. <laughs> well, all right, folks, this is it's time for our first break. When we come back, we're gonna get into uh, how the government's lying to us again. So uh, stay with us here on WLTH. Scott and the Rev, we's here. Yes. Give us a call, 219-85-1371. And if you didn't hear me this time, hear me again. You are listening to Scott Narev on WLTH 1371. Give us a call. 
1371. Have questions about your health? Well, the doctor is in. Join Community Health Net CEO and all around.